thanks everybody for coming out to pitch day for 100k it's always a great day to pitch this i believe is our 24th pitch day of the year and it's our final one um, we are going to be um taking a couple of weeks off we're coming back uh in early january for ces week um, so stay tuned for exactly when and where that one will be um, but it will be the week of ces so it's always a great day to pitch um, today, we're going to hear from Glenn Loomis at Query Health and Ephraim M Makube from Hutano. It's been a little while since we've heard from Ephraim. Can't wait to hear his update. Uh, congratulations to Glenn and Ephraim on making it through our gauntlet of qualifications to get here to pitch day today. About every uh, We hear about from about 10 founders who want to pitch for everyone who gets to. So good on you for getting through. Startup NV is Nevada's statewide nonprofit startup accelerator and incubator. We operate seven free programs for entrepreneurs and four for-profit investment funds. Our government grants and corporate sponsors support our nonprofit mission in the short term. And over the long term, we're supported by the accelerators comp accelerator companies who donate a tiny amount of their equity to the nonprofit and our investors who donate um, a portion of their profits to the nonprofit. So hopefully we won't be dependent on grants forever. Uh, we run Pitch Day for 100Ks fortnightly on Wednesdays, where companies pitch for the Q&A and for entry into the Accelerator program, which comes with an investment from Fund NV. Now, added to those to our to that investment um, are additional investments from our investor syndicate, plus a matching amount from Nevada's SSBCI program. Since 2021, our funds and our syndicate have completed 30 transactions in 21 companies, directly investing $9.4 million. Partners like GoEd and others have invested alongside us, making our total amount of investment about $30 million. Uh, now that's an average of $500,000 per company if you're counting or doing the math. That's for us directly, or $1.5 million per company, including our partner investments. That $9.4 million that, that our group's invested directly is currently worth $27.3 million. So it's a pretty good track record for investing uh, over the past almost four years now. Now for the legal disclaimer. Uh, the founders pitching today for investment are pitching to our venture funds and our venture syndicate, which comply with SEC and Nevada Certified Investor Regulations. We invite the whole community to attend and watch online afterwards for educational purposes, kind of like watching Shark Tank, uh, hopefully a little bit nicer. Um, once again, the pitches today are not a general solicitation for investment. Uh, so end of disclaimer. Uh, our nonprofit work would not be possible without the financial help from grants and sponsors, uh, like the ones we have from the city of Las Vegas, Clark County, uh, the governor's office of economic development, the EDA, the USDA and others. Thank you so much for your support. And um, as far as other announcements, uh, Angel NV is starting um, again in January. So for founders, uh, that means we're gonna make at least a $200,000 investment in one Nevada company. So if, uh, if you're a founder out there and you're interested in, in, in a $200,000 investment that will be matched by the state of Nevada, so a $400,000 investment, be sure to visit us at angelnv.com and apply. Um, if you're an investor and you are interested in learning how to be an angel investor and how to do due diligence on companies, how to evaluate their, their, their valuations and all the other factors in them, uh, you can join as an investor in Angel NV. Uh, it's a $5,000 investment and uh, you get to help us screen the companies, you get to help do due diligence on the companies and ultimately uh, we vote as a group to invest in one of the companies that comes through the program. And uh, the last four years that we've done this, we've actually invested in two companies each year, but it's up to the investors each year. Um, if we get over $200,000, exactly what happens with that extra money? Do we put it all into one company? Do we split it up between two or exactly what happens? That's up to the investor group. So no telling what's gonna happen. So tune in in January through March to figure out uh, what we're gonna do with Angel NV. And we hope that you'll join us uh, either as a founder applying for the money or as an investor learning how to do angel investing. So that's all of the announcements that we have for today. All right. Yeah, so my name is Ephraim. I am a CEO and founder of Hutano. And uh, today I'm just going to uh, go through some of the uh, traction that we've gotten as a company since the last time I was here. Um, and let's see here. Sorry, my... Oh, there we go. All right. So 140 million people or so uh, visit the ER every single year in the United States, and 18 million of those end up being admitted. That's uh, an annual number. And yet we know that in the U.S., we have a shortage of about 25,000 beds every single day. 
Um, but the interesting thing is that of all the patients that get discharged from the hospital, 30% of them end up coming back to the hospital for the same diagnosis that they were that, that they came in for in the first place. The impact on the hospital when a patient comes back is pretty significant. They are being charged up to 3% of their reimbursement rates. And to date, 90%, 97% of all hospitals have been charged uh, or fined this 3%. And yet from op an operational standpoint, uh, hospitals are losing over $42 billion in uncompensated care, which we can also kind of draw a straight line through the fact that there's a lot of people coming into the ER and using it for, for primary care. Uh, and as we know, hospitals do care about their metrics, and um, uh, and any time a hospital is overcrowded, uh, they don't do very well uh, when people rate them. So patients, on the other hand, um, also suffer some really some real serious consequences, starting with the fact that uh, you know it's psychologically taxing every time you come back into the hospital. But the more challenging thing is the cost. Uh, it, it, it costs about $18,000 for a patient to be in the hospital for four and a half days, which is about the average stay in the U.S., um, and $1,800 per day every time they come back to the hospital the second time because they're actually more sicker than they were before. Then, um, of course, reduced quality of care and then strain on caregivers is another issue. Uh, payers. Uh, CMS alone is paying up to $26 billion a year for this problem, people coming back to the hospital. Um, and then, of course, it costs a lot of money to process all the claims over and over again. So let's talk about the solution. But before we do that, let's talk about how things work right now. If a patient comes into the hospital uh, in the ER, um, it, on, on exit, we give them something that tells them who to see on, on the outside world, uh, somebody that to, to take out their sutures, uh, review the medications, and so forth. The problem is that patients are not able to see that person or that provider because those people are inundated with, with a lot of patients. And the problem being that the same providers are being given to several patients. Therefore, as you can imagine, those providers are gonna be uh, pretty much uh, um, uh, booked up for a very long time. Now, what we're proposing on our solution is a patient comes into the hospital. The first thing we do is we verify their information if they're already in our ecosystem. Uh, Hutana is a platform that was built uh, quite a while ago. Uh, the intake process allows the hospital to check information like primary care provider, uh, who, um, who, who, what the insurance is, and all the details that we've typically found to be missing when people uh, get to the ER sometimes. Um, at some point, that patient is going to be discharged from the hospital. When they get discharged from the hospital, what the person who's discharging the, the, the patient does is simply put in the discharge diagnosis of the patient because that's really what determines how critical it is for this patient to get a follow-up appointment. Um, the algorithm in the back basically looks at all the clinicians uh, in, on, in, in our ecosystem, chooses the clinician that is best for that patient, that can see the patient on time. For certain diagnosis, for example, COPD, a patient might need to be seen within three days uh, of discharge. So our algorithm is going to find the provider who's available within three days, who takes their insurance, and might even take some of, some of the barriers away, like maybe that provider provides uh, care in the house so that the patient doesn't have to worry about going to the clinic, uh, or they provide uh, telemedicine. In any case, by the time the patient leaves, that patient has an appointment set up. Because what we found is that just the mere fact of having an appointment when a patient leaves improves the success of that patient not coming back by almost 50 uh, by almost 50 percent the market opportunity for this um, there are over 6100 hospitals in the United States about a million physicians in the United States uh, based on what we are charging hospitals and providers for our system uh, that's about a um, that's about a 4.5 billion dollar market uh, however the serviceable addressable market for us being that we're in Nevada uh, we're looking at uh, Nevada, California, Arizona, and Utah, and that brings it down to about $606 million. Um, However, what we're looking at is 10% of that market over the next 24 months or so, and that brings it to about $606 million. So let's talk about the business model. We're a SaaS company. We charge hospitals anywhere between $50,000 to $325,000 a year, um, and we also charge providers $300 uh, a, a month, and that's a business model that we've had for our platform that's been in existence for the past couple of years. Traction and milestones. Um, 
We have uh, secured a $270,000 contract with one of the hospital groups here in, in, uh, in Las Vegas to install our software at their three, at their three facilities. Um, the competition we view as um, spending a lot of time trying to figure out how to identify patients who are at the risk of, uh, of, of returning to the hospital without understanding that every patient is at risk. Even a 25 year old who's otherwise healthy, if they leave the hospital and they're unable to get that appointment that they need to get sutures taken out in say seven days, they will end up in the hospital getting sutures taken out in the ER at a very high expense to the, to the, uh, to the patient, but also uh, clogging up the, uh, the ER that could be used for other people that have actual em emergencies. So when we look at all our, our competitors, most of the tools that they have put onto their EMRs or other software are really designed to give analytical information to identify patients that are at most risk, whereas our, our approach is every patient is at risk. Therefore, every patient should have an appointment before they leave the hospital. Our marketing strategy is really simple. Um, the group that we started with here in town um, is a launching pad for us. They're a part of 140 hospitals in, uh, nationwide. Uh, as long as we do a good job and we uh, we show uh, real good uh, value to them, uh, that's where we start. We already have 19 providers on our platform. Um, and for every hospital that we uh, we sign up, we need 13 providers to serve the 162 or so patients that get discharged every single day from, uh, from hospitals. Um, otherwise, talking about our team, um, I'm the CEO and founder and uh, a little bit about my background. Um, I started off in IT. I have about 15 or so years in IT. I've done just about everything in IT. And then I became a physical therapist, worked in, in the hospital and many other settings, including the ER for, uh, for several years. So that's where my experience comes from. Um, otherwise, the rest of my team uh, includes uh, Scott Selko. He's a neurologist here in town. Uh, he has a deep and wide uh, network uh, uh, from a physician standpoint, but also domain expertise in uh, the hospital system. Michael is my CTO, uh, and then um, uh, Dr. Awaji is our chief medical officer. Talk about financials. Uh, this is what we anticipate uh, over the next uh, five years as we start with the uh, three hospitals that we add, anticipating that we can grow at 100% year over year. So from three, three hospitals, six hospitals, and so forth, over that five-year period, we are anticipating that we should be able to get up to about $15 million uh, ARR by the end of the, those 15 years. And on the, on the doctor side, we're adding 13 doctors for every hospital that we add on, which should be relatively easier for us because those doctors um, are getting a constant supply of, uh, of referrals from the hospitals that they otherwise would not get at this point. So our funding request at this point is uh, we're, we're raising $1.5 million and um, uh, we are $75,000 into it. And uh, the cap is $15 million on a safe note. We have already raised uh, $300,000 in previous rounds. Um, some of the things that uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the local press has, has said about us. Uh, and then, of course, I want to spend some time to just thank you guys. And if you have any questions, please uh, uh, let me know what uh, uh, what I can help answer. Thank you so much. All right. How does the algo interact with the calendars of the patient and the provider? That's from very interesting way to go. A couple of paid, paid pilots with the local big hospital. That's uh, that's really great progress. All right, it's a way to way to use your connection with them to actually you know, put it into put it into some some promising business. So, um, just as we wrap up here, thanks um, to uh, to Ephraim and uh, and Glenn for uh, presenting today to the viewers and participants on. Um, and just a few other notes as we wrap up. Um, investors, if you're curious about how to become an investor, please reach out, um, especially since we have our Angel NV uh, program coming up soon. Uh, we made our first capital call for Fund NV2, um, uh, our pre-seed fund that does investing in the companies just like you, you saw today. Um, and an 1864, our seed fund, a uh, $10 million seed fund that invests in companies a little more mature than the ones you saw today, um, um, is uh, also going to be making its first capital call here in the next few weeks. Um, uh, and if you get involved in any of those things, you become a member of our investor syndicate. So you get access and, and look at all kinds of deals that, that we see um, through this process and others that we 
monitor and and, and source. And thanks again to uh, Glenn and Ephraim for pitching today. Uh, so the next time we're going to see you is in the first week of uh, the during CES week, which is the second full week um, in January, the first full week in January, the second Wednesday in January. Um, so uh, be sure to tune in for where we're holding it and when we're holding it. Uh, it's always a little different during CES week. And then uh, we're going to hear from two additional uh, Nevada startups at that time. Until then, take care of yourself. And if you can, someone else too. We'll see you 